everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Kara. I work here on the support and the demo team at Jane. So I'm just going to share my screen here so we can start looking at some slides together. Okay. All right. So this session is going to be everything you need to know about intake forms and charts. And as I said, my name is Kara. And uh, I've been with Jane for two years now. I did work in a practice before as a nutritionist, so I have worked with intake forms and charts in my past career. And honestly, intake forms is one of the features that I really enjoy the most because it allows us to collect a lot of really important information prior to the patient's visit. So we can get things like health history, important billing info, as well as consents if you need to collect that type of detail. And uh, they <laughs> work really well with charts too. So they really go hand in hand. I'm gonna let Em introduce herself because she'll be speaking about charts to you folks. Hi everybody, my name is Em. I am part of the demo team as well. I'm actually a demo coach, but before that I was part of the support team. So uh, there's a good chance if you've called in that we probably chatted over the phone or maybe I did your demo, but I'm really excited to chat with you about charting. It's one of my favorite things to talk about in demos. So excited to dive into that, but I'll let uh, Kara take it over for intake forms here. Awesome, thanks Em. So for today, if you'd like to split screen so that you can watch our presentation and follow along in your own account, uh, we sent out some instructions ahead of time, but we do have them on the screen here as well with a GIF video to show you how it works. If you'd like to take a moment to set that up, we'll just give you a couple of minutes there. It can be helpful to do this because then you're able to really clearly see in two screens on two sides, uh, the presentation as well as your own Jane account so you can follow along. Excellent, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So for today, as part of our intake form chat, you'll be able to learn how to use the template library in Jane to help get you started creating your intake forms so that you don't have to create them fully from scratch. And then as well, how you can collect billing information, health history and consent directly from your clients ahead of their appointment. This can be really helpful because then you don't have to spend the time at the beginning of the session filling out forms. You can actually dive right in to starting to help your clients and build that relationship. As part two, Em is gonna chat with you and you'll learn how to use the template library to create your own chart templates because it can be accessed both from the intake form area as well as the templates area. And as well, you'll learn how to navigate a client's chart area like a pro. And we'll give you some great tips and tricks to be more efficient when charting too. So look forward to those. All right, to get us started, I'd love to welcome you to the Jane Deli. And you might be thinking, what does a deli or a sandwich have to do with intake forms? And I really like to compare intake forms to a sandwich or essentially the experience of ordering food in a restaurant because I find it makes each area of the form quite memorable so folks have a better time remembering what section of the form does what. So I'm going to escape out of here and I'll pop right into my Jane demo account so we can get started. And you'll see here, I'm already in the intake forms area, but you can navigate to this section by clicking settings at the top blue menu bar there. And then on the left hand side, you'll see forms and surveys here. Uh, once in that forms and surveys area, you'll just click on intake forms where it says view and it will bring to you exactly to this page. I'm going to go ahead and select new intake form. Okay. So this is where the sandwich <laughs> idea comes in. So I like to think of the general section of the form as how our sandwich is delivered. So essentially we can give our intake form a name and then we can also decide if we're going to send the form automatically whenever a client schedules a particular type of appointment or if we're gonna send it manually. So we would have to trigger the form to be sent from the uh, profile page for the client. So there are different reasons my, why you might want to send one automatically or send one manually. I'd love to know what you're doing, uh, if you're using the automatic version or the manual and why. There are no wrong answers. Uh, feel free to post your comments in the chat there and uh, get the conversation going. We can also decide here how long our intake form is valid for. 
So you might need to collect new information every once in a while. And this way you could actually set your form to expire after a particular time period. And if the client schedules a new appointment after that time is up, Jane will prompt them to fill in this form again and give you some fresh information. This introduction area can be really handy for giving the client some instructions. So you can also tell them what the form is for, what the information collected is for and how it's used. Uh, some folks like to pop in extra instructions here regarding filling out the form. At the end of each section of the form when the client is filling it in, there is a continue button. So if they click that continue button before moving on and then they walk away from their computer, that ensures that everything they just filled in will be saved. So they can come back to the form later without having to start from the very beginning. Awesome. So just before I move on, I wanted to see if there were any questions in the chat. Em, did you see anything in there? Uh, I see here that um, people are mostly discussing that uh, some of the different opportunities that they'd use manual intake forms as opposed to automatic. Um, so Very cool. yeah, um, really interesting to see that the different ways that each clinic kind of works with the intake forms there. Oh, fantastic. I had a quick question for you though, Em. <laughs> why, uh, would... <laughs> why didn't the potato chips believe anything the sandwich said? Why is that? Because the sandwich was full of bologna. Oh my gosh. I hope folks in the audience love a good dad joke because I'm a big fan. <laughs> so you'll <laughs> probably hear a few more of those. Awesome. So I'm going to pop back over to the next section of our form, which is going to be appointment type. And I like to think of this as the soup that our sandwich comes with. So sorry, here's Kara, can, can I interrupt for one quick second? Sorry, sorry. There's a few yeah. people in the chat just saying they don't have access to settings. Could you just um, back up and explain why they might not be seeing that? Oh, yes, I apologize. So uh, intake forms are only going to be available to those who have full access permissions or to the account owner in Jane. So if you're set up right now as a practitioner front desk or practitioner limited, uh, or some other type of admin staff, you might not have access here. So you'll have to reach out to the account owner to either increase your access or to help you set up these types of forms. Oh, I hope that helps. All right, so coming back to our appointment type, uh, basically we can set up a form to be attached to all types of appointments that a client might schedule appointments related to a specific discipline. Uh, this one is helpful when you run a multidisciplinary practice. And so you might want to have a different style of form for massage therapy treatment versus a chiropractic assessment, for example. And you can also set up your forms for specific staff members. So in some cases, especially in the mental health field, I find that Certain folks are maybe providing different types of services versus the other in the space. So each practitioner might have their own preferred intake form that they want to attach to their treatments. The last option here is specific treatments, and this one is the one I see used most often. So in probably the most common use, we would see folks create their forms and attach them only to an initial assessment visit. Uh, so this way, a client will only receive this form on that first time when they come into the clinic, we might not need to send them a form like this on a subsequent visit, for example. Excellent. So I'm going to move over to profile fields here. And I like to think of the profile fields as the default toppings that come in our sandwich. Uh, so we can take these or we can leave them. You know, sometimes you go to a restaurant, you see what's on the menu and you think to yourself, that would be a lot better if it didn't have sun-dried tomatoes on it. I don't know about you, but I'm not a fan of sun-dried tomatoes. So let us know in the chat if you do like sun-dried tomatoes or not. Um, but essentially, the profile fields are where you can collect the basic demographic information for your clients. The only ones we can never remove are first name, last name, and email. Uh, Jane does need this to set up a basic profile for the client. Everything else here, though, is optional, and many of them can be made required. So if you absolutely need to collect something like date of birth, you can check on the required field and a client would have to enter something there before they move on to the next part of the form. A nice thing about this area is when a client fills out this information, uh, it will map right over to the client's profile page in Jane. So you don't have to fill out profiles. Jane is going to do it for you with this information here. Perfect. <clears throat> so I'm going to move on here to credit cards. 
And this section will only be available to you if you're using Jane Payments, which is our integrated payment solution. Essentially, it allows you to be able to securely collect credit card information, uh, store it, as well as charge credit cards directly in Jane. And if you have questions about fees related to Jane Payments in Canada or the US, feel free to pop those in the chat. I will make sure to get some answers for you. One of the nice things about collecting this type of information is it helps to avoid no-shows, uh, so clients are more likely to attend their appointments, uh, but also it lets you have um, a little bit more ease at checkout time so that all you have to do is click you know, one button, charge that card, uh, and there doesn't have to be a lot of discussion about the transactional nature there. In the past, in this area, we only were able to make credit cards optional, but now you can make it required. So some folks would rather collect the credit card information here in an intake form rather than having it set up as part of their online booking policy. So really it's up to you where you'd like to collect credit card details, uh, but you do have this option here and Jane is gonna give you some basics about how this is all going to be stored securely for the clients and your cancellation policy is there too. So before we move on, I just wanted to check in with you, Em. Are there any questions coming up in the chat? Uh, I think that some people are curious here about maybe what the um, transaction rates be might be for Jane payments. So yeah, so online payments with Jane in Canada are going to be 2.75% per transaction. Uh, so there is no fee to set it up or monthly or yearly fees either. You just have that straight 2.75%. And um, I believe you're a bit more familiar with the fees in the US. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I am here. Let me just pull them up here. Um, so in the U.S., it's going to be a little bit different. So if um, you're processing a transaction on a saved credit card on file, that's going to be 2.85% plus 25 cents per transaction. Whereas from the Jane Payments terminal, it would be 2.6% plus 10 cents per transaction. Excellent. Thanks so much for sharing that. Before I let you go, uh, did you hear about the celebrity sandwich? No. What? Fame went to their bread. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's move on to the next piece of billing information that you can capture, which is insurance details. Uh, so if you're using Jane's insurance plan, you can actually collect client insurance ins insurance information ahead of time. And this is really helpful because we know that things can get hectic in a busy clinic. We don't want to spend a lot of time typing in uh, policy numbers and details like that. So this would allow you to collect their policy information ahead of time and even allow you to give them the option to upload a photo of the front and the back of their insurance card. Uh, we know sometimes people make mistakes when they're typing in those long numbers. So having the option to add the photo can really help verify that all the information they typed in is correct. If we scroll down here a little, you'll notice that all of the insurers in this particular demo account are listed. So the client can select who their insurance is with, and then they'll be able to enter all the details like their plan and policy number, as well as the relationship to the insured. So you have that ahead of time. Once they come in for their service, you'll be able to quickly approve the policy that they've added, and then you'll be able to go ahead and set up that billing for them. Having these types of insurance features can be really helpful in removing barriers for folks seeking services. Uh, some people really prefer to be able to have their insurance billed directly uh, when they're seeking services like this. Cool. So moving on to the next section, I like to think of questionnaires as the customizable toppings on our sandwich. So here's where we can get really creative. Uh, most of the time, you know, folks are going to be excited to add avocado to their sandwich. Everything is better with avocado, right? <laughs> so here's where you can add your avocado. I'm going to click this little grid square icon. I like to call it the Rubik's Cube. That's just how I remember. Uh, but essentially, it's going to show me all the different options I have for what we call intake parts. So we can use these individual components to create our own custom intake form. But we can also search our template library right here and see what others have created. So maybe I'm searching for a form related to mental health. I might search the counseling category. And then from here, I can use my search bar to type in some keywords. So I'm gonna just type in intake form and see what comes up. 
So you can view all the different options on the left here. And then if you want to see a preview of that form, you can click on it and you'll see the preview on the right hand side. We can start seeing what's included in this form. If we decide that this is pretty much what we need, we can scroll to the bottom and click this insert button. And that will copy everything over. You might from time to time get a pop out like this. Uh, really what it's explaining is that there are certain parts in this form that are not able to be translated to an intake form questionnaire. So sometimes folks will create something like this under the chart template section. And so it might include a body chart or something like that. And those can't be translated into intake forms just yet. Uh, so basically what will happen here is when I click continue, everything except for the body chart or the sketch piece that's not able to be moved over here will populate. And then I can continue to edit from there. Okay, so, sorry, can I interrupt again for a second? Sorry, yeah. we're just having a few people that are just maybe having a little bit of a hard time following along to where we got to where we are, um, just like where we are in Jane. So um, the last question was like, where did you click to get to your screen? Um, so it's just uh, just a few a few questions about where where we are and how we got there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to get to intake forms, you'll hit settings here in the top blue menu bar. And then on the left hand menu, you'll click on forms and surveys. So I'll just leave this page so we can start over. And then you'll see something that looks like this. So there are a couple different types of forms and surveys within Jane. And what we're looking for is intake forms, which is this top option. And then we're going to click view forms on the right hand side. Perfect. If you have Thank you. And then I'm just going to. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You, you, you oh, guys. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you have existing forms, they'll be listed here. And you can either edit an existing form or you can start a brand new one. Perfect. And then I just wanted to add a note for everybody that is in the chat today. We'll do our very best to get to as many of the questions as we can. Um, and we will be sending out the recording after today's session. Feel free to please also pop your questions into the Q&A. It's a little bit easier for our team to track. So if you have a really specific question, pop it in there. And then Karen M can also take a peek at the Q&A and see if there's anything relevant that they can answer throughout. Um, but we will definitely slow it down a little bit and we'll do our best to answer all of your questions in the chat. Anything we don't get to, we will follow up with you after today's session. Thanks, Dustin. All right, so I'm just gonna add this uh, template back in here. And then I can go ahead and edit it. So you'll notice when you hover over a part that you'll get these three dots, which are your editing tools. If you click on them, they'll open up. So for example, we've already collected first name and last name as part of the profile field section of the form. So we don't actually need this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And date of birth was also in that area. So you can take that one out. If I scroll down, you'll see that they have used some checkboxes. And if I need to edit these selections, I can open the pencil icon and I can either change the label at the top or I can just edit the options that I see below. You can even include notes with checkboxes, which can be helpful because it allows the client to check something off. And then to the right hand side, they will get a note box that they can expand and give more detail. So I think we have an example of that lower down. Yeah, so this is a checkbox with a note extension. Perfect. If there was anything else that we wanted to add, we could always open our editing tools and click the plus sign, which would allow us to search our different intake options. And we can add, you know, a range scale, for example, if we didn't have one. Uh, range scales are really helpful for gauging a client's feeling around something. So in manual fields, it's great for pain management or understanding a pain level. Uh, in the mental health field, it's great for managing or understanding a client's stress level, for example. And so I can save this. And once I'm all set here and I'm happy with the form, I can then move on to the next section which is gonna be our consents area. So I just wanted to give us a chance to take a look at some of the questions there. Are you seeing anything popping out at you, Em? Oh man, every time I mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> some people are curious. Um... If payment is required to initially book the appointment, can they make it optional for the credit card section on the intake form? Yes, absolutely. If you're already using credit cards 
as part of your online booking policy, you could actually leave the credit card collection out of the form completely, uh, or you could make it optional instead. So you could either do do not ask for credit card, or you could do uh, details optional. Yeah, great question. Anything else jumping at you, Em? Um, good question. Sorry, there's quite a few. So let me just take a look here. Uh -huh. Sorry, bear with me here. Okay, when you have account permissions set up like a parent child, do forms get sent to both emails on file in both uh, profiles there? So if the parent and the child are connected by a relationship and the forms are enabled, like the permissions are set up to allow the parent to receive a copy of intake forms, then they would be able to see those. And the email address that's on file for the child would also get a copy of the form. Um, whenever a client schedules an appointment, whether they do it from the online booking page or you do it administratively, uh, Jane will send a link to fill out the intake form if it's attached to that appointment type right in that thank you for booking email, as well as in reminder emails too. Cool, great question. Awesome. So I did have one more quick question for you, Em. What's that? When is eating just like school? When? When you have three or four courses. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the consent section. Um, this section is really helpful. Jane has it set up in a way that the formatting is easy to follow. Uh, so we can also require signature here. And I like to think of this as the bill at the end of our meal. Normally in a restaurant, we would have our waiter or waitress come over with the little black folder book and we'd pop our card in the top and then we'd sign off on our receipt to accept the charges. Uh, so here we can require the client to sign to basically um, acknowledge all of the different types of information we might have set up in these policies. Jane will always set you up with three to get you started. So the first one will always be accuracy of information. The second will be privacy and sharing. And the last one will be related to your cancellation policy. It's important to remember with the cancellation policy that the information that you see in this text box will be from your specific cancellation policy. So if you've edited, edited yours from 24 hours to 48, for example, that's what would show here. If you do need to add additional consents, you always can. So you can click add consent here, but you can also edit what's there and you can even remove a consent section if you don't need it. Uh, here's a tip about consent. So some folks, if, especially if you're in the manual field, you might need to add a consent for things like consent to treat sensitive areas. Uh, in the mental health space, you might need to add consent for the limitation of privacy. If someone is at risk of self-harm, for example, they'll have to explain what the limitations are there. And if you're working in medical aesthetics or you're a medical injector, you might have a consent to understand the risks of a certain type of procedure. So it is great that you can add these additional consents. And if you have questions about how to format them or the language to use as part of your consents, please feel free to join our Jane community page. Uh, we'll make sure to put the link to our community page in our follow-up email, and someone might be able to pop it in the chat for us too. Or you can always reach out to your college or governing body to get more information about that. Excellent. So once we're all set and we have our form all completed, we'll click save intake form here. And I'm just gonna show you what a completed form would look like. So I'm gonna head back to my general forms area. And I created one today specifically for our uh, chat. And if you click the preview button, you can see what a form looks like for a client. So I'm actually going to make this a bit bigger so it's easier to see. Oh, maybe that's a bit too big. Here we go. So you'll notice that the form looks quite different on the patient side. So they are able to kind of scroll through uh, they can see the different areas, they're able to interact with it, click into the fields and fill in their information. So this is the profile field section and how it's presented to them. The next piece is going to be their insurance details, or if you were using credit cards, the credit cards would be up here, then insurance details. And then the questionnaire section is going to be presented this way. So these note boxes are an area where clients can type freely. 
And whenever we're working with a checkbox, you know, they're pretty self-explanatory. You can check them off. With a dropdown, we can only select one item out of the list. But with checkboxes, we can select several. And a range scale, we can just move the dot. Of course, I really like avocado, so I'm going to leave that as a 10. <laughs> Um, under the consent section, the client will have to check off everything that they're agreeing to. So accuracy of information, uh, they'll have to do their privacy and sharing here, as well as the cancellation policy. And if you require a signature, there will be an option to either draw the signature or they can type, whichever they prefer. Uh, so this is very similar to collecting an e-signature with something like DocuSign. Um, it just allows you to get that signature right from their device. So they can either use a mouse if they're working with a computer or if they're working with a touch screen, they can use their finger or a stylus for that. Uh, once they go ahead and submit this form, the questionnaire section will convert into a chart entry. And so this area will actually become part of their medical record. Excellent. How's everybody feeling about intake form so far, Em? Every time the mute, man. I didn't do this at all throughout the pandemic. And now, um, no, it looks like everyone's uh, really enjoying it. I think some people would like us to go a little bit slower um, just to follow along. But um, yeah, it looks like a lot of these questions are getting answered in the chat, which is really great to see. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, one thing that might be interesting to go over is how do you archive a... Uh, intake form uh, template? Yeah, oh, that's an excellent question. So if you're looking at your list of intake forms and you click the edit button beside the one that you'd like to archive, you'll notice that on the left-hand side at the bottom, there is an archive button here. Uh, so when you archive a form, all that's gonna happen is that this form won't be sent out in the future, but it won't affect any forms that had been sent out in the past and had been filled in by a client. Yeah, I thought I'd give you a quick peek as well, just before I pass things over to M, at what the emails would look like. So they're going to follow your basic Jane email format, and then there'll be a big button indicating that the client should fill out their intake form. Uh, but intake forms are also accessible from the client's My Account client portal. Uh, they'll see an, a section that's called intake forms. So they can always access them there if they lose track of the email in their inbox. <clears throat> Excellent. All right, so I'll pass it over to M. So I'm going to stop my screen share here and feel free to keep adding questions in the chat. We'll make sure to get to as many of them as we can. All right, take it away, M. Okay, awesome. One moment here. So, what we're going to go over is a recipe for chart success. <laughs> Um, so charting is one of my favorite things to chat about in demos. Um, so we're going to go over all the ins and outs kind of there. Um, one second here. So are you able to see my screen there? Great. You can see it, Em. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Kara. Um, great. So what we're going to start with actually is how to um, create a chart template. So we're going to hop into our staff profile here, um, and then we're just going to hop into templates. So here you're going to see a full list of the templates that you've either created or that you often use. If it's toggled blue, that just means it's going to pop up in your list of options to use on a patient. If it's toggled gray, it won't. Um, the neat thing about this area here is that maybe you've created a template that you want other clinicians through your clinic to be able to use. Um, they'll be able to see that pop up here and then just go ahead and select that they'd like to use it as well. So from here, you can go ahead and create a template either totally from scratch or you can actually access the template library. This is a list of templates created by other practitioners that use Jane. So they uploaded them here for people to use and customize. So you can see right now, it's got a list of different disciplines here, but you can also just uh, type in some key words if you'd like. So for example, like IV hydration, we can see that even though that wasn't listed as a discipline there, you can see that there are some different templates that are popping up. 
So definitely use your keyword searches here. If we take a look, we can see there's quite a few oops, in the chiropractic. So over 10,000 actually. Um, so you can go ahead and scroll through and see what people put. Or again, you can go ahead and type in like keywords to pull up specific ones that you're searching for. Uh, it's important to note that your templates will only pop up in the chart template library if you specifically select that you'd like to share them here. So your templates will be kept private and be your own unless you specify otherwise. So everyone's that's templates are in here, they definitely selected to have them shared. But um, here you can see how many people are using that template. When it was created, you can click add and then you can customize or you can scroll through and see what it is that they've put there. So if we wanted to go ahead and add, maybe let's search for like a soap note. There's one right here that gets used a lot. So we could go ahead and click add there. And then say we wanna edit it. It looks like it's been added a couple of times in the staff profile, but we can just click edit here. And then from there, go on and um, work through and edit the different areas. I did create a template that we're gonna use instead and we can go through and edit that one. So let me find it here. So if you wanna change the title of any of the templates, you can easily just click this pencil icon here. Easy to just change that name if you'd like. And so what we're seeing here first is the body chart. This allows you to draw and leave notes on the image that's shown here. We're gonna go over what that looks like when we're actively charting on a patient here, but right now we're just gonna still be in the building the template phase. Uh, so this is the default image. If there is something else you'd like to use instead though, you can just click here and go ahead and drag and drop to upload an image or choose a file. So sticking with our sandwich theme, let's go ahead and upload this sandwich here. I will be upfront and let you know that Tara is definitely the comedian out of the two of us. Um, so I'm sure she'll be popping in with jokes here and there, but um, I'll give her space right now, actually, maybe if she wants. Excellent, thanks. Um, I actually just have a couple questions from the chat here that might be really helpful to answer. Hey. Uh, so Christy is asking, I've been told that templates can't be altered if you're not the original creator. Is that correct? And can these templates be archived? Yeah, good question. So um, our, so if you're using like a template that's in the chart template library, oops, that is something you can definitely go ahead and edit. Um, so just by clicking add, you can then search that template and click edit here. Oops. Um, if though it's like maybe a template that like someone within your clinic has created. So let's try to find one here, maybe this one here maybe. So you'll see it says view. So you're not able to edit it in the same way, but you actually can click duplicate here. And what that does is creates its your own version of this template. So from here, you can go ahead and start um, editing things as you need. Mm -hmm. Awesome, mm -hmm. thanks for that, Em. It kind of leads into the next question from Brittany. Uh, is there a way to share templates internally to other chains or to other clinic staff versus sharing to all public Jane users. So I feel like that fits in really well here. Yeah, so I mean, like once you uh, create a template, uh, it is going to pop up in like your staff members list of templates here, it will be automatically toggled blue. Um, but if you'd like them to be able to use it, they can go ahead and just click the blue here to make it available. Um, and so let's go ahead and dive in further here. So um, if there's any information you wanted to change, like any of these labels, you can just go ahead and click here and change that label, or you could remove anything that you'd like. As well, you can make note fields required. So basically, it's going to prompt you to go ahead and fill out this note section when you're charting on a patient before you're able to sign off on that. What we're seeing here is smart options and narratives. This is really helpful to help you kind of build out um, like sentences a bit easier. So 
basically what you can do is select like your intro and you want to create like a subject and a choice. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see a list of different subjects that I've created. So like arm, back and neck, for example, you can go ahead and add rows or remove any or even rearrange them if you'd like, change what they say. And same goes for the choices here. Range scale, uh, Kara briefly touched on as well. Same with these check boxes here. But again, just as a reminder, if you do want to edit any of these, you can actually click here and just go ahead and adjust what they say. Have notes included beside them. Hide anything that's unchecked after you've signed it. And you can actually make it a required field as well. So you'll have to sign off on this or fill this out before you can sign off on it. From here, if you do want to add any additional items, you can click add item here or you can click this little grid box here. The items you're gonna find here to build out your chart template are a little bit different than you'll see in the intake form. So you've got some different options here. Like for example, you do have the spine chart, which is a big favorite. You can rearrange where that's shown in the chart there. Um, but yeah, I would encourage you to kind of dive into this area and take a look and play around with some different uh, items here. We're going to save this one. And before we dive into charting on a patient with that, I will just mention the charts section of your staff profile. So this area is really helpful because it actually helps you see all charts that are assigned to you. So you can easily go ahead and filter. So by like date range, chart state, maybe you want to see all of the charts that are assigned to you that you've not yet signed off on. You can go ahead and click draft here. That's going to make sure that they're all popping up here. So you can go ahead and hop into them, finish them up and sign them without having to go into the patient's profile directly. Uh, M, I just yeah. wanted to clarify for someone in the chat here. Um, mm -hmm. When we were chatting about the question related to sharing internally in the clinic, I, I think there was a misunderstanding. So all of the templates that folks in your clinic create will be accessible to others. It's just whether or not they toggle them on. So if you'd like to share with each other and you want to have access to someone else's template, all you have to do is turn that little toggle on and you'll be able to access it when you're in the client's chart section under that new chart entry, which we'll get to in just a few minutes. Great. Thank you so much, Kara. Um, perfect. And so let's go ahead and actually dive into what it looks like to chart. Um, so the easiest way to do that is actually through the day tab here. So if you click day, you're just going to see your day and just one day at a time. But you can easily click here and just jump forward or jump back as far as you'd like. Or you can just use these little arrows here and toggle to different days. If we want a chart, we can click on that appointment and that's going to bring us right into that chart section. And a nice little hot tip, actually, um, I was recently at a conference and uh, someone didn't realize that you could do this. But if you do want to see the um, appointment panel, you can actually double click on this appointment here and you can have everything in one screen. So uh, nice if you do want that up there as well. But we can just click the X here and focus on the charting. So from here, we're going to click new chart entry and then either select an item or select a template we created. So what we're going to see here is that there's a little calendar icon. So Jane's gone ahead and linked that to the appointment here. A little unlocked icon here, just letting you know a chart's been started, but it's not yet signed. And then from here, you can go ahead and start filling things in. So we'll fill some different areas in. I will also note you can actually go ahead and edit the title of this if you'd like. So if you do want to change this at all on the patient's chart entry, you can edit that title. From here with the body chart, you can still go ahead and change this image or make it larger if you'd like. Um, it's important to note that any changes that you do make in this patient's like chart entry here, it is going to reflect just this entry. So if um, you want those to be permanent changes, you'll want to make sure you're doing that in your staff profile. If we want to draw, though, we'll go ahead and click the pencil here. 
you can select a thickness, black, red, or blue for color, and then just draw, or we can use the pointer tool here. So this allows us to just leave some notes. Great. And so once we sign off on this, which we'll go over shortly here, if we hover over these points, you're going to be able to see whatever it is that you entered in those notes fields. If we scroll down, we can see here there's the smart options narrative. So we can go ahead and click better maybe for the arm. So you'll see it's building out a sentence right there. We can say maybe the back is doing worse and the neck is doing the same. It's going to build out that sentence. Range scale is pretty straightforward. So as Kara went over, you can just go ahead and drag and drop that to a point. And we'll check off some check boxes here. But if we get to the spine chart here, you can go ahead and draw on this image by clicking that pencil again. Or you can actually check off different areas on that chart here and leave any additional notes that you may need here. If you are on the US insurance plan, this is a feature that's exclusive to the US um, clinics, but you can actually add your billing and diagnosis codes right through the chart just by doing a hashtag and then typing in whatever the code is. So you can type in either the name of the code or the number, but it'll just look like this. So just again, important to note that this is for US customers and it's for people that are on the insurance-based plan. From here as well, a neat little trick is something called phrases. And not everyone knows about this one here, but if you've got words, sentences, or paragraphs you often use that uh, maybe you want to show up easier, you can actually create a little shortcut in your staff profile. It quite literally is called phrases. So it's a little phrases tab in your staff profile. But to utilize that, you're going to go ahead and do a forward slash. And then we're just going to go ahead and click our shortcut word here. And it's going to go ahead and fill in whatever it is that we put there. From here, we can go ahead and continue adding items. But if we were to close without signing, we're going to see that Jane's actually going to save this as a draft. So it's going to leave it unlocked so you can keep on hopping into that entry and editing it. If we do go ahead and sign that, we're going to scroll to the bottom here and click sign. And we're going to see that Jane's going to put that lock icon there. You'll also see the lock icon in the day tab here. So really easy to keep track of which appointments have chart notes that have been started on them and which ones have been signed. If we open this up, while we won't be able to edit in the same way that we previously could, we are able to make amendments, which I'll show you shortly here. Here's our little points. And if we scroll to the bottom here, we're gonna see the signed by date and time, but here's that amend button. So you can just click amend, go to the area that you'd like to insert that amendment, click this little button here, and then from here, let's go ahead and maybe add the neck and then just re-sign. So it's going to give you a spot just below with the date and time. Oh, and we have a really good question here. Um, I think this will be extremely helpful for folks who are either trying to track a client's posture maybe over time or folks who work in the aesthetic space. Uh, is there a way to use Jane to take before and after photos right in the chart? There absolutely is. So um, there is an item that you can either use on its own, it's called file and image, or you can actually add that into your template. So uh, let's take a look. This is like a cosmetic one here. So if we scroll down, we're going to see there is this little file area here. So we can see it's listed before and after. So you can go ahead and upload files directly into your chart if you'd like, but if you're using a device that has a front and back facing camera, you can actually take that photo directly through Jane here. So uh, really easy to upload before and after photos. 
And it's important to note that any files that you do add into your charts here will also be able to be found in this area here. So really easy to keep track of your files. Um, the default is always set that the patient cannot see whatever you've uploaded there. But if there is something that you'd like to share with them, you can just select on that file that you'd like them to be able to view it. You'll see that right here. So you'll just wanna make sure it says visible to client and then it's gonna pop up for them in their patient portal in the documents tab. Hmm. Perfect, Em, that's really helpful. Uh, some folks are just curious about connecting the chart note to an appointment and how we got that lock icon, the lock icon to show there. If you wouldn't mind just taking us through that again. Yeah, absolutely. So what you're gonna do is just be in this day tab here. And so you'll see your list of appointments. And so you can go ahead and click on that visit. That's gonna bring you right into the chart section. From here, you can click new chart entry and then select the item. And that's gonna go ahead and link that chart entry there. So that's one way there. In the case that maybe like you are, uh, you didn't go that route, um, let me see here. So let's hop into like, maybe Dave's uh, section here. So say we created a new chart entry without going through the day tab route, we're gonna see that there's no appointment icon here, but you can actually click here, oh my gosh, <laughs> click here and click add appointment. So that is another way for you to go ahead and add appointments if you need. Uh, in this case, Dave just doesn't have any appointments for us to go ahead and add, but typically you'll see a list there that you can go ahead and link. Uh, so you'll have that calendar icon popping up there. Awesome. So one more quick thing. What mm -hmm. part of the meal makes you most sleepy? Oh gosh, what? <laughs> a napkin. Amazing. <laughs> Um, so we've got a couple other features that I'll go over here before we'll um, turn it over to Destin for some uh, questions before we complete the session today. So um, some important ones that I like to mention are first being if we actually go into this entry, say you're going to be using a lot of the same information you had from a past visit, you can actually go beside that past visit, click this button here and click duplicate. And it's actually going to open up a brand new chart entry associated with the new appointment, but have everything already filled in, which you can then go ahead and edit further if you'd like. So big time saver if everything's going to be pretty much the same. Another neat feature as well is you can actually pin items. So maybe we want to go ahead and pin those codes. We can just select this little pin here. It's going to go ahead and save that at the top of the patient's chart section here. You can go ahead and color code them as well. But say we want to bring that forward into a future chart entry, we can actually just click this button here. That's going to go ahead and open up a brand new chart entry and bring those codes forward. And then from here, we can either add additional items or select a template to kind of build off of that further. Really easy to unpin as well, but much like your staff profile, you can easily filter for chart entries. So if you're looking for a specific date range, chart state, so signed or unsigned, staff member, discipline, or even keywords. So let's type in like low back, for example. We're going to see all of the low back chart entries pop up here. And then another one that a lot of practitioners really love to use is the medical alert. So of course you can use this for actual medical alerts. We do find that a lot of practitioners really like to use this as well for personal notes about the patient. So you can click here and let's say like Edith is allergic to latex, but also Edith loves to talk about her dog Max. So we wanna make sure we're asking that in the visit there. You can save that and it's going to stay off the charts and just in this area for you to easily see until you click into it and remove it. An important note though about that is that once you delete this, it's gone for good. So it's not going to save it anywhere. So um, just be mindful of that with the notes that you're putting in the medical alert section here. 
So that completes the um, chart section here, but I'd love to answer some questions or we can pass it over to Destin. Yeah, I think it'd be great if we answered some questions. Uh, might be easy if you want to take a peek at the Q&A, so look both at the answered and the unanswered ones, and maybe mm -hmm. just pick a couple. And I'll remind everyone, we'll do our best to answer it we can, but we'll follow up with any unanswered questions. And thank you so much for all of these questions as Karen and look through the Q&A. I think we've had over 70 questions in there. So that's been a lot. So a huge thank you to all of the Jane team members as well that have been here answering questions. Um, it's phenomenal. We're so happy to have you all here to be able to help you out. Um, so Kara and was there anything in the Q&A that stood out that you might want to answer for the rest of the community? Uh, yeah, I see that there's one here that's specific about charting that says, um, it's by Shanna. So thank you for submitting that there. It just says, uh, what's your recommendation for doing a patient's initial examination and then transferring that data to a daily soap um, and further in care? So um, a lot of practitioners will actually utilize that duplicate feature. So they'll go ahead and click here, click duplicate. You can again, go ahead and adjust what the title is at all. So maybe this is now like a subsequent visit. And from here, you can go ahead and remove anything that's no longer like necessary, but rather than just going ahead and having to copy and paste everything into this entry, you can remove what's no longer necessary for you. And you can actually build off of that with like, maybe you've got a SOAP template that you wanna uh, continue building off that with. So that's kind of what we would suggest for that rather than just going through and copying and pasting. Perfect. And I was curious if you could maybe walk folks through the appointment report, uh, how you can find draft charts or charts that have not been created. Uh, Sandy asked, front desk providers cannot see if staff have completed their notes. Each person can only see their own locks on their patients. Mm -hmm. um, so you can actually see that if you navigate to reports under the top blue menu bar, uh, and then you search in the appointment report. You'll see it there. Uh, one of the filters in this area is chart status. And so you could narrow it down by practitioner and by a date range and look for any appointments that have no chart at all or appointments that uh, have a chart in a draft state. And this is how you can sort of round those up and make sure that they all get completed. Mm -hmm. So here we can see all arrived appointments. Um, I didn't put a date range or a staff member, but these are all of the arrived visits that do not have a chart entry attached. So really easy to go ahead then and either click directly into their patient profile, or if we click here, it's gonna open up that appointment panel for us. Perfect, great tip. Look, I think we probably have time for one one more question, and then and then we'll wrap up. Um, so if there's one more that you think would be would be great to answer, we can do that. So we do have a question about deleting patient information if they no longer want an online presence. Uh, this practitioner Anne has been asked at least three times in the past few months about that. Sure. So do you mean like deleting, I guess, like the patient's charts uh, entirely kind of? Is that what you're referring to? That's sort of what it sounds like. Yeah. So I mean, like um, you do own your data, so you are able to go ahead and export any of these entries if you'd like. So um, definitely you can do that in batches here um, by printing or saving it as a PDF. So it's probably the first step that you'd want to do. Um, an important note is that if you do delete the chart entry in Jane, so you say you scroll to the bottom here and you click delete chart entry, uh, you're going to see this big scary message here and it's going to request that you type in deleted or delete, sorry, in all capitals. Uh, it's really important to note that once you delete a chart entry in Jane, it is gone for good. So um, if that's kind of a route you're wanting to go, I would recommend exporting all of your chart entries beforehand uh, because once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. And what about yeah, just, their like client, like their like per, uh, 
like profile, like their their information outside of the chart can that be removed as well. I think that's what she was getting at. She's like oh. all of their info. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so if there's billing information attached, it does make it a little bit trickier. Um, so Jane will want to keep that profile saved in. So um, I don't know, Kara, do you have some tips around that maybe? Yeah, the only way to fully remove a client in Jane uh, is to delete their whole profile, but we can't do that if there are chart notes or appointments attached. So we would have to manually go through, remove all the payments that have been there. Uh, we'd also have to delete every single appointment they've had and delete all of their charts in order to fully remove their profile. So if you'd like more information about the why behind this, please feel free to send us an email to support at janeapp.com and we can give you more background. Uh, part of the reason there is definitely that patients have or should have access to their information at their request. Uh, that is a law in Canada, and I believe there's a similar law in the United States. Uh, so we have to preserve this information as best as we can. So that's why we don't make it super easy to fully remove a patient profile or to delete chart entries. Uh, but of course, if you have more questions about that, feel free to reach out and we can get in touch with our privacy and security team and get you more information. Let me just take one more peek at what we were at. So a little over 80 questions or actually no almost 100 questions in the chat in the q a so that's amazing and hundreds in the chat so thank you so much everybody and we will see you at another webinar soon thank you so much